Alrighty. One second. Great stuff. I'm hoping you're having a fantastic day. I was just taking a few notes and getting ready for the show. And I didn't realize that this has started. Okay, so if you're going to be watching this video for the first time, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Prosper Tarovinga, and I'd like to welcome you to yet another exciting episode of the Lunch and Learn. I don't think we need... Oh, okay, whatever, whatever is happening there today. So I'm the founder and CEO of um, Live Long Digital, your one-stop shop for everything digital, and the creator of the Online Prosperity Blueprint, your four-step system to online prosperity. So I was just reading a book there by Bill Gates. I love that man. He's so inspirational. But I also realized that he just did not start off as the creator and founder of uh, Microsoft. He started off a company that was called Truff or Data. Okay, what happened to this company is it was his biggest failure in his life. All right. It was his first venture that he did. He failed to make money in it because he could not solve technical problems. Can you believe that? All right. So even all the big people that we're looking at right now, all the people that we, um, you know, sort of celebrate or are excited about, they started off somewhere. Why are you giving yourself a hard time? All right. So in this video today, I'm going to talk about pretty much, you know, all the adversaries that we come across and, uh, you know, how you can overcome them as an entrepreneur. And, you know, sometimes maybe... Just hang the boots. You never know if you're doing the right thing or if you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. All right. So um, I've got Dave on the call today. Sabine, thank you so much for tuning in. And if this is your first time watching the Lunch and Learn, we go on for 30 minutes where we normally talk about how we can help you earn a lot more money while you're having less struggles within your business because we want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And your host is Prosper Taruvinga today. And for the next 30 minutes, I really, really want us to talk about how we can overcome your entrepreneurial adversities or whatever it is you might be going through right now in your entrepreneurial journey. And I also want you to know one thing, guys, you are not alone. All right. Great stuff. And um, let me tell you something. If you're going to watch this video up until the end, I'm going to have one just simple request for you. I really am going to ask you to share this video and then comment that you have shared this video. You see, when I ask you to share this video, it's not because I'm going off for a popularity contest. I'm winning already, okay? I just want to help other people win, and I know you feel that way as well about your business, all right? So if you're going to share this, just write shared at the end, or if you've shared it now, that also is um, appreciated. Guys, I know, and I know you know, oh, okay, Trish just tuned in, all right? We'll start again. Thank you so much for tuning in, my love. I know you know that every entrepreneur goes through some sort of adversity, all right? This whole entrepreneurial journey is sold to everybody else, but the hustle is sold separately, all right? The batteries that come with this entrepreneurial journey come in separately, all right? It comes with territory, it includes cash flow challenges, it includes fecal customers, nobody has an attention span these days, it, 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 it includes, you know, belligerent investors, people that pre pretend they're going to help us with um, money, but then they're not going to come with it. It comes with unpredictable economic downturns. And one other thing that we don't realize, we remain the same. Thank you so much, everybody else that's tuned in and everybody else that shared this video so far. All right. The best entrepreneurs are the people that tackle each and every one of these things, no cash flow, no customers, um, bad economy or whatever, without losing their stride and the passion, which many, many, many of us seem to lose when the going gets tough. All right. Now, how then? 
to some people go from major failures. Like I just mentioned about Bill Gates who had his company uh, Truffle Data and it failed dismally but then went on to become one of the richest or is the richest man in the world right now. I don't know how they're comparing with Jeff Bezos. How then do other people come from that much failure, that much traversity, that much bad luck to become the best thing that ever was? It's all to do with passion. It's all to do with the need and the zeal to really want whatever you are creating right now to exist in the world. All right. Most of us are just peddling a product just so that it takes you to the next paycheck. That, my friend, will ruin your passion and the need for you to exist or the need for you to push forward. All right. I keep referring to Bill Gates because you know what? He's one person that everybody knows. Right now, you're probably looking in front of a computer that uses some of his software that he created. All right. But it didn't come like that. He just didn't rock up and become a billionaire. His first venture, Truffle Data, I keep repeating this because I really wanted to sink in. It failed to make money because he could not solve technical problems quickly enough. Now, can you imagine somebody of his stature not being able to solve technical problems? All right. So what does it tell you? It tells you whatever then happened for Microsoft to be created. He had people that were helping him. It was not all just him. All right. His first venture failed to make money because he could not solve technical problems. Voila. And then the second person, the, the, the second person is probably um, Branson. I'll talk about him a little bit later. All right. So when, when, when Bill Gates was going through all these nightmares, he was trying to sell softwares and technical, you know, information, but could not solve those problems by himself. So instead of making excuses, he credited his later success to Microsoft, first of all, to the team behind the scenes, and second of all, to the lessons that he learned from Truff or Data. So right now, you could be starting on a venture and it looks like it's not working. Right now, you might be working on something and it's not yielding results. That is what you're supposed to be going through in order to learn what your biggest grand finale is going to be. All right? So some people won't even understand that that traversity, that adversity is needed for you to step on so that when you are winning the big, uh, you know, prize or the big success that you imagine in your head, you need to have learned it of something. All right. So that's why now the adversity has become huge for other people because they've got a short term thinking mentality and those that are actually thinking for the long term would know that what they're going through is not permanent. What they, where they are is not permanent. Whatever cash flow problems that might be happening is only because they're probably not ringing people enough or they're not connecting with other people enough. All right. The unpredictable economic downturns. Yes, that happens. Those are cycles that happen in the economy. They shouldn't affect you putting your message out there. OK, so if you are not really doing the best to create that your business lasts until next week, I think you're just playing with yourself. All right. Because all these other cries that we're hearing in the market is only people that are not doing their work. Do you know what I mean? Trish says you're one of the most inspirational people. <laughs> Thank you so much, Trish. I'm just, I'm just really reading and helping myself grow. And whatever I learn, I try and impart to people, um, you know, so that we can all be, do, and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. It takes 21 years to be 21. So if you start maybe writing a book and you, all you have is just notes, Expand on those notes. Find out what is making you gravitate to those notes and reread them. Ask somebody else to read them for you and they will find a few nuggets that they will then expand your line of thought and there comes out a book. Nobody sets out to say, okay, I'm going to write a book and then all of a sudden they've already got the hundred pages. It don't work like that. Tina Murray, thank you so much for tuning in. And Tina, I told my wife what you told me. <laughs> You know, so where you are is not temporary, is, is not permanent, guys. 
All right, so you you might also realize people like Richard Branson. Apparently, he's got dyslex dyslexia. Yeah, you know, you know, it, 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 it makes him slow to read and slow to comprehend things. But he's the fourth richest person in England right now. If if he had taken this, you know, adversity of him not being able to 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 math or or to to write comprehension because of his dyslexia, would he be where he is? You know, you know, he, he, this is quite dynamic and powerful and it has actually helped him succeed. You know why? Because now he hires people that are good at what he he needs to be doing, but he only he does he's got the brains to put it forward. If you look at it right now, Branson is known for over 400 companies. Whatever company you can think of, Branson has got something to do with it. And Nicole, how are you doing, my friend? So many of the um, technological advancements that are happening, Branson has got something to do with them. And he's become the fourth richest person in England. How can you become the fourth richest person in England when there's the queen and then and, and the princes and everybody else? You gotta have some coin. And he's just one guy who just roped up with his dyslexia or whatever retarded disease he's got. Sorry if that's your disease, but I'm just trying to tell you that even people that have something are becoming somebody. But you got to audit yourself. We're getting to that part. You've got to audit yourself. You know why? Because no fingers of the same hand are the same size. All right? Just because somebody did something, it doesn't mean those results are going to be transferred back to you. You don't know what res resources they have. You don't know what, um, you know, you know, equipment they're using and you don't know what the environment is giving them. So don't let what you're facing or going through right now be the end of your story because it's not. All right. I had to leave what was my home. I had to leave what was my livelihood because none of what I was doing or none of what my country was doing at that particular time was going to yield any of these results. I'm from Zimbabwe, by the way. One of the poorest countries in the world with the highest inflation. You know, by the time I left Zimbabwe, I strongly, strongly remember that you would walk into a shop and if you wanted to buy a bottle of milk, by the time you walked down to the fridges, I don't know why they always put them all the way at the back. If you walk back to the, to the, to the, to the ca cash register, if $5 was the price of a $2 a bottle of milk, by the time you get to the cash register, it's already costing $10. Now, I came from places like that where there was no hope, where there's only been one president. And ever since then, I've always tried to make sure that whatever I do, whatever I touch, I'm paying back. You know why? Because now I've got it good. You know? See, I'm always intrigued and I've always been intrigued by, by the, you know, the fact that some sort of adversities that people complain or people say they're having is actually things that energize other people. We had nothing. We would eat cereal with the fork so we could save milk. But some people don't want to eat the milk. You know why? Because apparently it makes them sick. Try and tell a hungry African kid that you can't eat, you know, bread because it's going to make you sick. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just a whole different mindset from a lot of people. And it makes other people super, superhuman, you know? It's creating businesses. It's creating other people to, 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 to really, 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 really move forward in life you know why because whatever you think is an adversity is actually somebody else's strength that's why pharmaceuticals are, 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 are growing bigger and bigger you know why because they're solving problems because people are getting sicker and sicker for you that's a despair for them that's payday all right so like i'm saying it always really intrigues me the fact that you know some adversities will energize some people and almost make them superhuman. Do you know what I mean? While others are driven to despair. It's your choice and what it is that you decide to do with the circumstances and the situation that actually make you decide whether, okay, are you going to be an, an, an entrepreneur or are you going to be a has-been or a has-run? People are tired of seeing one-click wonders. What are you doing for the people that you are showing up for? Are you doing anything you know, to, to, to get over those adversities or are you just going in there for attention and once you get their attention, you want to start crying foul. No one has time for that. 
You know, I really think that it starts with a very, very strong survivor instinct. You know, it's it's not meant for everyone, this whole entrepreneur thing. And and also, I think it was, um, uh, what is his name? Uh, oh, what's his name? What's his name? Please, somebody tell me where where you have two very conflicting and opposing thoughts, but you're still very, um, you know, very sane. You know, some people cannot fathom what I'm saying and they think I'm being demotivational. But your story is not finished to be written right now. If you keep chasing waterfalls that are not going to lead you anywhere, what if your destiny or your path is meant to be doing something else? That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm trying to make you realize that maybe what you're chasing is a waterfall. Maybe what you're chasing is something you were sold to by somebody who then went on and did other things that did not exactly entail what the Facebook ad told you. I always talk, talk about this story about Beyonce. Beyonce wrote that song, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, and then she put it out there. In the club, if you go there, sometimes, you know, when I'm, um, you know, just trying to figure out what your money is still up to, you know, you go in the club at like 12 midnight when the DJ is about to close off, he plays that song, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, you know? But where is Beyonce? Beyonce is out there eating a million. Beyonce is not a single lady. Beyonce is sitting with uh, with Ivy and, and Jay-Z at home. But she created a song that people relate to. You know what I mean? So it, that also relates to all the Facebook ads that you're seeing that have probably sold you on the dream of entrepreneurship. But at the end of the day, it's probably not what you want. Do you know what I mean? And um, Trish says, <laughs> love that. So true. Use your advertising to spark creativity that helps you break through the glass ceiling. Oh, of course. And Nicole says, don't go chasing waterfalls. Please take to the rivers and the... I don't know what the song says, but I really, really love me some TLC right now. And Mark, McCain, Edwin, thank you so much for, for sharing, man. All right. So, you know, I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs and every single day, a lot of people write to me and they're like, Prosper, man, how do you, how do you show up every single day? How do you have so much passion? How do you talk to people the way you talk to? How have you managed to create a cult like audience? How do you do that? And I'm just like, Hey, listen, dude, I love what I do. And the reason why I really, really love what I do is because I no longer do it for money. I'm good, man. Do you know what I mean? I'm not doing it to help people and I really, really appreciate every person that sticks around and watches my video. You know why? Because one day you might share it and when you share it, you might help another person without even realizing it. You know, people are being faced with adversity. People are burning out on the internet because you're not aligned to the things that you're doing. It's not your calling, you know what I mean? When you go in and you're just trying to do something just because somebody sold it to you, it's not you. It's not yours. Figure out, sit down with yourself and audit yourself. What makes you happy? Who are you? What, what do you want? And when you realize that, you know, your story and your experience has so much market value than you could ever probably dream of, do you know what I mean? You're here to make a difference in the world. Stop chasing things that were not meant to be for you. Some things are just here to teach you a lesson. And then when you've learned that lesson, move on and do something else. So you've got a good story to tell. You know, I always laugh. Sometimes I, my mom died in the year, you know, in, 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 in the year 2000, you know, and I always joke about her not being Y2K compliant. If I would sit back and grieve and say, oh, I lost my mom. Oh, I can't do things. You know what I mean? She moved on. All right. And, and, and it, had she not moved on, I would not be here because I would have been set home with mama. You know what? Because mama will always cook for me. She would always give me a place to sleep and I wouldn't have wanted to go out the way I did. So sometimes things that you think are actually pulling you down are just there to teach you that one lesson. And when you do get that lesson, you have a good story to tell. And like I said before, guys, if you're going to watch this up to the end, please share this video. You know why? Because somebody might be out there who really wants to hear this message today. I'm not doing it for a popularity contest. I'm good. I'm, uh, yeah, I know you're good, but somebody really needs to hear this message that the entrepreneurial dream, you know, might be sold to everybody else, but the hustle really is sold separately. 
you know what I mean? You got to maintain a really big positive attitude because some people are constantly chirping on things that are not meant to be theirs. And you can tell because you don't get aligned to the work. You don't really get aligned to what you're putting out there. And people can feel that. You know, I don't mind sitting around here and talking to people and really, really finding out how I can really help you. Sometimes I throw in a few jokes there, but I'm learning and I'm studying and I'm really finding out a few people have lost, you know, the will to to, to want to do more. You know why? Because at the end of the day, all that that we promised is not what is at the end of the tunnel. We are waiting for people to guarantee things to us. We're waiting for people to give us a 100% guarantee or a money back guarantee. But are you asking for those guarantees from yourself? Are you asking yourself, what, 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 what am I going to put in in order to get the results that I'm asking off of somebody else? I mean, it's, it's, it's human nature to want a whole lot more than we're paying for. But at the end of the day, what is it that you're paying for? Because all the things that you're getting for free... They're the most expensive things. You've got all the, 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 the alignment that you have with the universe. You've got all, all the knowledge that you really need. You just need to remind yourself. And you also got to be making sure that what you're putting in is exactly what will come out. Garbage in, garbage out. So you got to guard all your, 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 your influences. And that makes people very, you know, tired and, and it makes people unmotivated. You know why? Because they are not really moving forward with what they're meant to be do doing. You know, there's people like, uh, what's his face? The guy who created the light bulbs. Somebody type his name. I'm, I'm, I'm already in this. Oh, Thomas Edison. You know, Thomas Edison called every failure an experiment. You know? And, and whenever he made a failure, he would pivot. So he made no excuses for all the 1,000, or is it the 10,000, you know, uh, failures that he made. And he, told, he called them experiments because each and every failure brought him towards the answer that he wanted. So maybe you are burning out, but you don't realize where you're supposed to be going because you're not in tune with the end destination and it's not meant to be yours. But if something is yours, you will pull through it. You know, if something really, really is yours, you will, you will succeed and you will know about it. You won't even need to be paid for doing what you're doing. Do an experiment right now, this week. Try and give somebody your services and don't even ask for a pay. If you can do that without feeling any bad stuff, that thing is meant to be yours. If not, I'll go back, sit down, meditate or whatever you do in these days just to make sure you get the answers. Because if you cannot help somebody by actually helping them without asking for any sort of fees, my friend, I think, I think, I think that is not meant to be your thing. Because then when you help them, you get a testimonial off of them. Now that testimonial is worth a lot more money than you pocketing $100. You will spend that $100, but that testimonial, you can regurgitate it and move it over and over and over up until somebody says, I think that's my guy. All right? It is a catch-22. And what do they say about a catch-22? It's like, you know, it's, it's hard for people to realize that it actually takes money to make money or it takes experience to actually get the experience that we're looking for. We go out there and try and self-proclaim ourselves to be experts, but are you an expert to who? Who have you helped? Who can come around and say, excuse me, Prosper, thank you so much for all you've done. This is, this is my thank you to you. I can only just put it in words, but thank you so much. You have helped me do X, Y, and Z. If you ain't got that, then don't go and start proclaiming those things because you then don't align with that. And when, when you don't align with, with, with what you call your results, it then creates the adversity which makes your soul, your body reject anything that you will be saying and then there's that discrepancy and you burn out and then you don't feel like going any further with your work all right so in 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 the meantime when you become genuine and when you when you when you become forceful your message is on point you start building relationships with others and you start communicating in such a way that people will be like god how does that guy do that you know because right now you are isolated by yourself because you've got nothing to offer. You know? 
An isolated position is hard to defend because you're always facing adversity. Right now, I can just make a phone call and say, hey, what have you got for me? And people are throwing themselves over me just to give me business. Because I created that. I, 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 you know, I found out who I was and who I was going to be of value to. And then I just aligned myself to those people. Because if you're selling things that you're not passionate about, if you're selling things that you're not really aligned with, God, do you know what I mean? It, 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 it will definitely, definitely, you know, you know, get you um, burnout and you, 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 will, you will find it difficult for you to go through in the path because you know what? The universe works in certain ways, man. You can't stop the universe. You can't stop the universe. It's day and it's night. Nothing in, you know, there's something in between. And, and you can't even stop that process. The seasons come in, summer, autumn, winter, spring. You can't stop the process of the universe. Who are you to come and impose what was not important, you know, imparted onto you? That's the one thing you've got to fi figure out. Why am I burning out? Why, why am I not, why am I losing passion in things that I'm supposed to be doing? It's because you're doing things that were just meant to be a lesson for you. Right. And uh, Belinda says, I get told I'm too generous, but nothing lights me up than assisting others. Belinda, who tells you that? The thing is, you might feel you're being too generous. But you know what? If you are full, you would never feel empty. All right. If you've got a lot to give, you never feel like you've got nothing. The people that tell you that have a scarcity mindset. Has the universe ever told you you've you've OK, I think you've had enough air to breathe. All right. Today. Just have three more breaths. You, you're finishing up the air. The universe is abundant. All right? So if you really, really want to win this entrepreneurial game, guys, you really got to start, you know, opening up the, 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 the uh, abundance mindset. Give of what you have. Whatever it is, you learn in the process because out of sight, out of mind. When people don't know what you're saying, when people don't see value in what you've got to say, when people don't understand you or don't want to understand you, you're not going to make money. That's when you start burning out. That's when you don't have cash flow. That, that's when you don't become successful. That's why you become a one-click wonder. But when people really want to move your message, they will share your videos. They will share your message to everybody else that really wants to hear it. This is the part where you get to share the video. Okay. Because when I say they, they will share your message and then they will share your, your, your vision, you, you then click the share button. All right. I'll try that again. All the time that you're not really going out there to really connect with people, they won't know what to say. They won't know how to talk about you at a barbecue. And that's why you burn out. Right. That's why you, you you start finding all this adversity and you feel you think like everything is out there to hurt you. But no, that's not it. Do you know what I mean? Once you, you, you align yourself with your message, you surround yourself with smarter people. And you know what? At the end of the day, all these entrepreneurs, they're looking for people to hang out with, with people that are on a purpose. Do you know what I mean? And when you are on a purpose, some some of those people that are also finding their purpose will find you. And that's when the magic starts happening, you know, and in the process, you, you, you obviously want to take care of your mind. You want to take care of your health. You know why? Because what you're creating, you want to be sitting front and row seat for it. You can't come to my, you can't come into my, 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 my inbox and say, Hey, Prosper, um, sorry, man. Can I ask you a question? I can tell the energy of somebody, you know what I mean? By, by the words they use, by the things they say and who they talk to. You want to prioritize your health. You want to live your life with drive, with passion and just zeal so that people know you are not a mistake. You're there to stay. That's when you don't have any adversaries. That's when you don't burn out. Do you know what I mean? The biggest mistake, guys, that a lot of entrepreneurs are, 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 are believing themselves is, you know, at the end of the day, all they just got to do is maybe buy some clickety funnels, funnel, and, you know, just do a few things. It doesn't work like that. People buy from people, all right? So, so you can't just look at the fun things and say, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur now. You know why? Because I wrote a blog. Now, let me just, you know, put up a status and you think you, you, that's it. 
In reality, experienced leaders and entrepreneurs will tell you how to anticipate and actually handle the inevitable re um, and, and, and also the tough challenges that come along with the long-term happiness. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a gift to wake up every single day and do what you absolutely love. It's a gift to have somebody pay you money to do what you love. It's a gift to have somebody pay you money to have that lifestyle, those holidays, those Ferraris, or whatever it is that you feel like. But you got to earn it. And the way you do that is to be a court and court. Somebody who really cares about the outcome. Somebody who really cares about their own business. I don't recommend the entrepreneurial lifestyle for those that don't feel like they can risk adversity and those that just want to be an overnight success. All right? If you're ready to give this entrepreneurial journey a shot and you're ready committed and, and you're probably doing whatever it is, I just recommend that you watch this video again. All right? And then you can solidify your natural strengths. All right? My mission here is to help you you know, to, to, to make more money with less struggle. But you don't have to struggle to make that money. All right? I want you to gain more recognition within your industry that you absolutely love. All right? Let me have one more question before I go. Belinda says, hang out with other passionate people who won't zap your vibe. Exactly. Well, at the end of the day, all you got to do is give more so that you don't have any shit people just trying to hang around. Do you know what I mean? Because if you've got energy like mine, do you think a flaky person would just come around and think they can get away with it? All right? So you really got to, you know, choose your standards and choose the people that should be around you. And they got to have permission from you to make you, you know, you know, listen to them or want to even understand them. All right? Become your own star player if you really want to avoid all the adversities that come along with entrepreneurship. All right. We can all benefit from the experiences that others have have gone through. The guys that I've talked about, Bill Gates and, and uh, you know, Richard Branson or whoever you read about in the biographies. Rome was not built in a day. So stop crying and start doing. you got to create and relate for the people that you want money from. OK, the best entrepreneurs don't succeed by dodging challenges, guys, but they do because they know how to handle them. And how to handle them comes from here, my friend. Thump on your chest and be like, it all comes from here. I believe in you. I know you're going to be a success and I want to read about you, but I won't read about you if you're doing what you don't love right now. All right. So maybe if you really watch this video up until the end, I really want you to share this video. You know why? Because it's not a popularity contest for me anymore. It's about helping the other person. And I also want you to type in, I've shared this. Actually share it on your wall and write a little bit of a blurb and then tag me in it. I really want to see how serious you are because if you got something out of this video, as, as much as I enjoyed doing it and, 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 and talking about it, this, this is probably one of those cornerstone videos that just came out of a whim, but I think you got the value and I know you're going to share it and you're going to help somebody to actually be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I want you to earn more. I want you to be respected in your industry and I want you to gain all the recognition that you possibly can, but you got to put in the work. This has been Prosper. Thank you so much for tuning in.